Many times when we start our business, we fail to realize how many decisions that we need to make on a daily basis, especially when we are starting up. What kind of business model we have, what kind of camera we want to use, what kind of website we need to get, how often we post on social media, all these things coming our way that we need to decide. On one hand, it's a good thing because we are the ultimate creators of our business and we get to decide those things. But many times what happens is that we get caught in an overthinking decision-making process that doesn't really serve us very well. In this episode, which is episode two of a two-part series that I have done with Heather Lottonen of the Flourish Academy, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about decision-making in our business and how the quicker you make decisions also means the quicker you make progress in your business and move on to the next level that you want to reach. I'm glad that you're here today for the Focal Points Podcast. Welcome to Focal Points, an Enphoto podcast hosted by me, Dory Howell. This is the place to be if you want to ditch the overwhelm in your business and start creating a business that you love. Well, welcome to the Focal Points Podcast, everybody. I'm here again with my guest, Heather Lottonen of the Flourish Academy. I love my conversations with her so much, but we are going to dive right in because I think this is a super, super important topic, and Heather is an expert in being able to describe this, but we are going to talk about decision-making. So Heather, it might seem obvious, but I want to ask you, what is the number one thing that you think new photographers and new business owners, even sometimes established photographers and business owners struggle with in their business? Well, it is in fact decision-making. And yes. I would say that highly successful people tend to make decisions quickly mm -hmm. and rarely change their minds. Now that doesn't mean that they don't pivot. If something doesn't work, they will absolutely pivot. But it just means that they don't regret making a decision because they understand that any decision, any decision, will move them forward. Even if it's not in the perfect direction, they can pivot. They're still in motion. They know that in order to learn, grow, et cetera, you have to be taking action. And overthinking, which is what we talked about on a previous episode, and not making decisions will keep you stuck. It will keep you small. It will keep you worried. You'll, you'll not be sure. You just won't feel confident. You won't trust yourself. So I want to encourage people to, even if you've said in the past, oh, I'm, I'm just indecisive. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. just me. That's just so me. So if you want to hear a whole conversation about <laughs> yes. that, we're not going to get into it in this episode, but go back and listen to the episode that's going to be linked in the show notes about overthinking, because that is where we talk, we, we cover a lot of what stops people from making decisions. So now we're going to talk about actually making those decisions happen. So sometimes people have an identity of being, you know, someone, I just can't make a decision, but listen to that episode and you'll get some tips and just some perspective on why we think that that is not such a great idea. No, that's not a good, it's not a good thing to affirm. You know, some people will have these traits of like, they struggle to make decisions. Okay. Which is fair, but can you do it quickly? Can you struggle a little bit faster? Put in some effort. <laughs> do you waffle back and forth afterward? Mm -hmm afterward mm -hmm. that can be kind of deadly because then you're you're second guessing yourself no decisive people a successful entrepreneurs are decisive people mm -hmm. and they do not overthink did i make the right decision did you ever buy a pair of shoes or a purse or something or a shirt and then come oh man i wish i bought the other one oh did i get the right mm -hmm. color okay mm -hmm. i used to do things like that but then i i started to think to myself well if i if i want another color of this shirt i'll just go buy it so mm -hmm. What, so it's what's okay. the big deal? I'll, yeah. Or I'll go exchange it. Right. Like, now, who, right. Who cares? I am married to one of these people. So I <gasps> get, right? yes, I get the, because I live it every day, the struggle that some people have with making these decisions. And I can honestly say when it comes to my husband's perspective, which he does listen to these podcasts, so honey, I love you, but um, is that the struggles aren't intentional a lot of times. And so I don't want anyone to feel any sort of shame or blame. Oh, right. It, right. Course. If they're struggling with this, because I know many people are sitting in situations where they want to make these decisions quicker. They want to be able to move forward in the business. They want like all the, the inclination and the yearning is there to do it. But this is just one area that plagues them. And so as we move through this, just know that we are not approaching this. We know that this is like a real life thing and it really is a struggle for some people. But what Heather has to share today, hopefully will, some of these tips will help people 
um, be able to see it for what it is and move forward more effectively with their business. I have eight steps, a proven process to make wise decisions. But just to echo what you're saying, it's very common for people to be indecisive in the realm of entrepreneurship, especially mm -hmm. if you've never had a business. Of mm -hmm. course, you're going to doubt yourself and, you're qu and question it. That's totally normal. I just want to help you see it differently and yeah. make these decisions faster. So number one is to ask yourself, is there really a decision that needs to be made here? Or am I putting myself in an unnecessary either or scenario. Mm -hmm. You would be surprised if you ask someone, so I do a lot of coaching and I will ask people that, you know, they'll explain the backstory and I'll say, okay, what's the challenge? Mm -hmm. And they'll explain more of the backstory and I'll say, okay, but where's the issue? <laughs> and then we, you know, we talk back and forth and we determine there's actually not really an issue. <laughs> there was no decision that needed to be made. It was just something they needed to talk about, which is mm -hmm. fair. I'm here for right. it. But are you sure that a decision has to be made. Do you have to choose digitals or in-person sales? Really? Do you? Mm -hmm. Is there a way that you could hybrid that model or test a few different things out? I know that you've done several iterations of all combinations. Of all pricing. the combos. I've done on it. I've done it all. So there's no, there may not even be a decision. Okay, the second one, oh, my favorite. This is the one I use all the time. I use it with my kids. I would ask your husband when he's struggling, is the decision reversible? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the truth is, I can actually, there might be more, but I can only one decision comes to mind that is not reversible, and that is having children. Because once they are here, it is 18 to life. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But besides that, if the decision is reversible, now I understand some decisions are bigger, like where should I live? Should I buy this house? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are big decisions, but they're still reversible. Mm -hmm. You could still they move back. You, they, they, cost, they may cost you money. They may cost you money, but it won't be, but, you know, my, um, some of the people in my coaching groups, they say they want to make a shirt by me that says, but did you die? You know, right. you, you're not going to mm -hmm. die. You, Yeah, it might cost you money and it might be painful. But mm -hmm. if the decision is reversible, could you just bring some levity to it and say, oh, okay, well, I can change my mind. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. The third one is to set a deadline and stick to it. Mm -hmm. Is it is spending another week in turmoil really going to help you make up your mind? Mm -hmm. And if it's not, then just make the decision and move forward. And you you might make a good decision. You might make not a great decision, mm -hmm. but you could always adjust when you needed to, but you won't know until you move forward. And that requires action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The next one is to make a list of pros and cons to clarify your choices. This is classic. Draw a line mm -hmm. in the middle of a piece of paper, put the pros on one side, the cons on the other. And it, it might even really quickly come to, you know, just like seeing it sight. Oh, it's so obvious. Yeah, I should do this. So yeah, I've done that several times with some really big decisions. And you know, you kind of sit there and you're like, oh, this is so dumb. Like I'm making a list of pros and cons. But once you, <laughs> right. but once you see it written out, usually, at least for me, there's been a pretty clear winner on what yes. I, on what I need to do or what direction I need to move. Or maybe it's a it's a decision that I don't need to make the full decision and maybe a smaller one mm. has come to light where I can be like, okay, I'm going to do this first, test this, and then we'll go to the full thing. And no, I literally, I'll be like, oh, this is so dumb. I know, it feels but, cheesy. Yeah. Right. But it works. <laughs> it it, it works. does work. I actually made a list on an airplane ride last week. Going, to, we have a mutual friend Nicole Begley, and mm -hmm. her and I were talking about changing one of our programs. And I and then I, I landed and I showed it to her. It was, it was so obvious. We looked at it. And right. we're like, Duh. Of course. Right. <laughs> of course. That's Duh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next one is to avoid allow. Uh, this is easier said than done, but avoid mm -hmm. allowing fear to paralyze you. A fear of change can prevent you from seriously considering any of your options and keep you from making any decision at all. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sort of being facetious, but not really. Are you going to die? You know, mm -hmm. if, if you're not going to die, what is the real fear? So there's another question I ask when I'm coaching, when I ask what is the challenge and, and they're able to present me with a challenge, the next question is what is the fear? Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll usually say something very surface level and I'll say, no, but what's the real fear? 
Right. What, what do you right. really fear? What are we really getting at here? Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. And, and you'll often find that if you can just identify that, it will help you to move forward. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The next one is which option is most supportive of your long term mm-hmm. goals? Mm-hmm. Now, this comes back to something we said on the overthinking podcast, which is sometimes a lot of times overthinking is a lack of clarity. Mm -hmm. So if you have clarity and you know your long-term goals, you can look at the decision and say, how does this decision support my long-term goals? Mm -hmm. And if it supports it in a positive way, then it might be a little bit easier to make that decision. Or if it shows itself to be problematic, then Mm -hmm. it might be easier to say, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this instead. Right, right. The next one is, could you project yourself into the future and imagine how you'll feel about your choice? Mm -hmm. So this takes a little bit of visualization. This is a meditation technique where you kind of think, okay, if I decide to do this with my pricing or my marketing, what is the potential that could happen Mm -hmm. with this? Oh, I could make more money. Oh, Mm -hmm. okay. Or I might limit my sales. Oh, Mm -hmm. well, then I have to think that through too. So could you just look into the future instead of all of the obsessive worrying about like right now making that decision? How will this decision impact the future? And going back to the previous, does it support my long-term goals? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then finally, the last one is to realize, honestly, Dory, it, it doesn't matter that much. Probably, you know, when you're faced with a couple of decent choices, Either choice may work out just fine, but simply Mm -hmm. making the choice and following through consistently will yield great results because you are in motion. And taking action is, again, what separates successful people from those that struggle. Successful Mm -hmm. people take action. They don't second guess themselves, or if they do, they just do it anyway, and they continue to move forward, understanding that they may make a misstep and they'll just course correct, and that's okay. Right, right. Creating a beautiful product line to show to our clients and present to our clients sometimes can be really difficult because the options seem endless. One thing that my clients love and what I offer everyone is the Complete Set by Enfoto. It's a three-in-one combo product that allows me to give them a beautiful presentation box, a USB, and also a book or an album of all their images from their event or their session. And it's something that is a hit every single time. If you're looking for samples for your studio, absolutely take advantage of the 75% discount that Enfoto offers all new clients. Head over to our show notes page and grab that sample discount today. I think one thing, you know, all of this is is so great because some of the things that I've learned in my decision-making journey, because this is something you just, you know, we talked about this in the other episode that we did, but you have to be aware. You have to know that you're struggling with this. You have to see, I'm, I'm, this is not, I'm not thinking about this the way that I should. I'm really struggling with some of these decisions, but honestly, some of the decisions that I see with um, photographers specifically, what camera system do I use? Okay. Nikon, Sony, or Canon. They're all good. They're all good. They're all good. They're it, good doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. PC or Apple. It's all good. Like, so many things that we get, what lab to use now, personally, obviously we're partial to in photo around here. Of course. Right. But there are certain things that every lab does some things really, really well. And we want to honor our relationships with our labs because they're our partners, but there are some things that Enfoto doesn't do. Like they can't ship me really big 30 by 40 canvases. We're working on it, but we're not there yet. So it's taking those those things and realizing it doesn't really matter. Do I need to calibrate my my monitor? What calibration system do I use? Oh That's my gosh, you, do thing. you want to know how I answer that question? I get asked yeah. that all the time. And yeah. they'll say, should tell, I tell calibrate? Answer. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, li- ooh, I'm a little snarky. People say, do I need to calibrate my monitor? And I'm like, I don't know. Do, you, do your prints look like crap? Yeah. Okay, if your prints don't match what you see, yeah, you might need to calibrate. But did you order prints and they came back looking pretty close to what you expected? Like, whoa, this is good. Then, okay, don't touch it. Yeah. Because you're probably just going to mess it up. I don't calibrate my monitor. No, not if you don't. Why Never. would you? You right, unless the only calibration I've ever had to do to my iMac, I had to adjust the brightness a little bit. It was just a yeah. little bit off, but the color yeah. was fine. Mm-hmm. So, and how did I know this? Well, I didn't overthink it. I ordered a few prints from a few of my different labs. They came, mm-hmm. they looked great. I moved on. I mean, it was like, okay. 
Why would I waste my energy on a decision like that? Why, right. will, why would you waste your energy on what website platform to use? Pick one. But, you know, if you have you always shot the same camera system? Yes, I have. Which is your Canon? I'm Canon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I started as Canon and halfway through, I've been in business about 20 years. So about 10 years in, I switched to Nikon. I also mm-hmm. use Fuji. I, I could just as easily um, really iron up one of those new Canon mirrorlesses. I'm tempted to sell mm-hmm. everything again because guess what, Dory? It doesn't matter. I love gear. I'm, I can yeah, do myself. You're, you're a gearhead. Yeah, I love sure. tech. You're a gearhead. And guess and what? I, you one one year I used PC and then I switched to Mac and now mm-hmm. I'm I am operating system ambidextrous. Oh, I could yeah, do either. either. <laughs> I have a, I have a a Mac laptop. I have my PC system here. I use an iPad. I use an iPhone. Like it just everything everything mixes up. And I've I've been okay with that. Some people may not be okay with that, but I think just sharing a few of the the examples that we've had where we've had to make decisions where, you know, in our experience, Heather's been doing this for 20 years. I've been doing this almost 15 years. It's like some of the things that we know from our experience, they just don't Don't matter matter as much. They really, really don't. And so I'm going to wrap this up right now. And I want to thank you, Heather, first of all, for just being here and being such a great wealth of knowledge and friend to our audience. How can people find you? Absolutely. You can find me at Flourish.Academy on the internet, or you can just search Flourish Academy and Facebook and Instagram. I also have a podcast you can listen to where mm-hmm. I talk a lot about of the um, personal growth and development that uh, I see as a need with photographers who maybe mm-hmm. struggle with confidence or belief in themselves. You definitely want to listen to the Flourish Academy podcast. And I also have a download of the items we discussed available with this okay. episode. I'll provide you with that so you can give everyone a link in the show notes and they yes. can grab it. Yes. So what we will do is we will link all those things in the show note to Heather has everything, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, like the whole bit. We'll just link all those things. in. There. I would love that. Thank and you. And we will, we will also have a link to her um, download that goes over these steps. So you definitely want to get that. Don't listen to this podcast and just forget about it. And think like, Oh, that was some really nice talking points. Head over to the show notes page at blog.info.com slash podcast. Get this download, review it. Post it on your wall if you struggle with this and really see if you can create a space in your brain for your business that allows you to make decisions quickly um, so that you can always be moving forward in your business. So we just want to thank you so much for spending some of your time with us today, Heather and listeners. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a listener to the Focal Points podcast. Thank you to End Photo for your sponsorship. I'm Dory Howell, and we will see you all next time. Hey everyone, I hope you've enjoyed the program. I have a quick request. If you've enjoyed this program or enjoyed other programs that we've brought to you courtesy of Focal Points and InPhoto, I would love for you to head over to Spotify or iTunes and leave us a review. These help us more than you know when it comes to getting the word out about the program and how we can help other photographers who might be dealing with some of the same struggles that you are. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your review today.